Hello, and welcome to Poppy Approved Movies. My name is Poppy. And I'm Natalie. In our podcast, we'll review and critique my favorite PG-13 movies. Movies that I wasn't allowed to watch until I turned 13. Every other week, Natalie and I will watch a new PG-13 movie. And I'll see if Poppy's movies live up to the hype. Which, of course, they will. Today, we're going to be watching My Blue Heaven. Before we begin, there will be spoilers if so you haven't seen the movie and don't want it to be spoiled. Press pause and come back when you're finished. Now, Poppy, tell me the deeds on this movie. Okay. My Blue Heaven came out in 1990 with a runtime of 1 hour and 37 minutes. It's not streaming anywhere. We had to rent it on Amazon. It looks old. It did look old. It was written by Nora Ephron and directed by Herbert Ross. Main stars are Steve Martin, Rick Moranis, and Joan Cusack. Fun fact, originally the Vinny character was going to be played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Steve Martin was going to play Barney. You know what's crazy? When we started first played the movie, I asked, is that Arnold Schwarzenegger? And then you were like, no, what are you talking about? This is completely different. Isn't that, what a funny coincidence. It is a funny coincidence. But Arnold turned down playing this role because he went to do Kindergarten Top instead which is episode 43 in our podcast. If you haven't heard it, it's a good one. <laughs> so what do you think, Nat? Um, I thought it felt almost like I was watching a TV show, but the TV show was black and white. <laughs> okay, why? Because it was old? Well, first of all, it felt old. But second of all, it just felt like a TV show. Like, it didn't feel like a movie. It, it just had... felt like I watched a bunch of episodes. Yeah, it had, like, cuts, like breaks, where the screen would go into... A narration where they would have words so that would be like almost like a commercial break entrance you know i can see where it does feel like a tv show and i feel like it wasn't like a storyline that flowed throughout a whole movie it was just like it felt choppy yeah i get it a little episodic where it's just like this part of the story and then this part of the story and it was a little plain like i was a little bored in some parts no way i thought it was super funny i watched it again with you and i thought it was totally entertaining but overall i liked it Steve Martin was good, and so was Rick Moranis as Barney. What do you rate it? I rate it a four stars. Four stars? Okay, you liked it kind of it then, huh? Mm -hmm. I thought it was entertaining, but I felt like some parts got repetitive as well. You did? Yeah, like the whole, was it the cha-cha, or what dance was it? The merengue. They used that in like three different parts, and I was like, okay, well now this joke is played out. Like, it was (laughs) funny the first time, but like, (laughs) we've done this for three episodes now. (laughs) Yeah, it was pretty good though. I like that. And then it's like, he knew how to dance a merengue. No, you don't. Like, you just dance one time with your friend. Yeah. But he was so confident, he was like, I'll teach you how to do it. I know how to dance a merengue. All right, we get into the recap. Okay. The movie begins with Vinny and Linda moving into Freiburg, an idyllic suburb of San Diego. Vinny is a former mob member who is testifying. He's being entered into the witness protection program. FBI agent Barney is their liaison. As soon as Barney leaves, Linda leaves as well. She cannot take living in such a quiet community. I don't, what was that all about? Why would you have to leave? You're like, it's too quiet, it's too pretty, it's too nice? I don't get it because she's not the mob boss. Yeah, but that's his wife. They might go after her, too. Like, to get to him, maybe? No, but, like, she was just the wife. Like, why would she be the one that's like, I'm freaking out. Like, if anyone, it should be him. Like, she's probably used to normal stuff. No, no. She wanted the craziness of New York. She just didn't like how quiet and peaceful and nice people were. That's what she couldn't take anymore. That's why she left. I know. That's why I'm saying it doesn't make sense. Why? Because she's not the mob boss here. But she's from New York and lives that life. Barney gets back to his office and his co-worker Kirby asks him about Vinny. What are with these names? Yeah. Kirby, Barney. And Vinny. They're all E (laughs) names, right? Barney asks his boss if he can have more assignments and he's told no. Vinny is his only priority. I wonder if Barney, like the dinosaur, was before this movie. Because you think after Barney, the dinosaur came out. No one goes by that name anymore, right? Nobody names their kid Barney anymore. Was that even a name? Barney in this one. Um, I don't, I don't There's know. another famous police officer TV show, and the guy's name is Barney Fife. 
So I don't know. I guess. Oh, there's really the Barney in How I Met Your Mother too. So Barney, I guess it's a. It's a name actually. It's a name, yeah. Barney oh. Miller as a police show. Barney was pretty popular. Barney the dinosaur. There's that. Barney goes home and Wally, a baseball player, comes out of his house. Wally's being sent down to the minor leagues. Then Margaret, Barney's wife and Wally's therapist, tells Barney that she's leaving him for Wally. She said that he's too methodical and boring. There's another E name. Wally, Barney, Kirby, Vinny. At least Margaret has a normal name. Margretti. Margery. Margie. Margie's how they call them Margaret's. Really? <laughs> I thought it was like Peggy. Peggy? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I always wondered why those random names are thrown in there. Vinny is sad and depressed in his new surroundings. He goes to the grocery store to go shopping. He's taken aback with everyone's friendliness. He yells and curses people out. And he's never, you didn't think that part was funny? He's just like cursing people. Like, have a nice day. And he's like, up yours, buddy. You didn't think that? No. Later that day, Vinny is arrested for Grand Theft Auto. Like, he doesn't even start small. He steals a car. Police officer Crystal finds him very attractive. Assistant DA Hannah does not. She begins to question him, and he makes up story after story. Her voice is kind of funny. She can read right through him. She's about to book him when Barney comes in and tells her that Vinny is in the witness protection program, and she can't touch him. She gets super annoyed and argues with Barney. The actress who plays Hannah is a twin. Yeah, well, who she very weirdly reminds me of because they don't look anything alike. Mm-hmm. The principal from Matilda. The principal from Matilda. I don't remember her very well. I don't Do they really. look alike? No, they don't look alike at all. Oh, really? Well, they have like the same bun. <laughs> Maybe like hair bun. It. But then, then they're also just like scary people. Yeah. At home, Hannah's two sons, Jamie and Tommy. And there's more E's and E's, Jamie, Tommy. Maybe this was meant to be a joke that Are we le- just didn't pick up on. Oh, there's that. actually one. Are leaving to stay with her ex-husband, Will. She gets really upset with Will when he barges in without knocking. Leads her to drink and accidentally kill her son's turtle. Who got emotional about this? You did, huh? Yes. Yes, you start. well... You started crying at this moment in the movie. <laughs> the poor turtle didn't deserve it. I know, but it's not real. It's not a real turtle. It's this is movie. Maybe this is why I think she's like the lady from Matilda. <laughs> so this is why we paused the movie, because Natalie needed a moment. We needed a moment to get he it together. He didn't deserve that. And she <laughs> promised. She promised this kid. The kid was like, don't kill my turtle. And she like laughs and she scoffs and she's like, I promise. And then she failed. She broke her promise. How could she? She killed. The, it was an accident. It wasn't on purpose. Well, that's her fault. Yeah. Maybe it was her fault. She knew. The next morning, Hannah goes shopping and Vinny sees her in the parking lot. He follows her into the pet store. Hannah's there to buy a new turtle in hopes of fooling the boys into thinking that it's their pet. So she kills the turtle and then she lies about it. Terrible woman. Vinny recognizes the pet store owner. It's Billy Sparrow, an ex-mom member. Billy? Hey, there's another one, Billy. He's in Freiburg under witness protection as well. Is this where they just throw the mob bosses? Yeah, we realize it later. Vinny walks out of the pet shop and Barney yells at him for skirting the law. Barney tells him to stop being a criminal or be at risk of being arrested in his real name. Then Vinny comes up with the idea for Barney to date Hannah. He's like, maybe you should go out with her. Later, Vinny goes to a restaurant and it's filled with ex-mom members. They're all nearby in witness protection. Vinny comes up with a great idea that they should start a criminal empire together. The mob crew agrees. The criminal empire begins with hijacking of trucks and fencing of stolen goods. They're doing well until Vinny gets arrested. Hannah starts the interrogation again and he starts telling lies again. Barney comes in and rescues Vinny and Hannah is beside herself. I always think this is kind of funny because he always kind of, he's really quick on his feet. She'll be like, why do you have 20 copies of the book? He's like, well, well, what if I want to read it more than once? I mean, it's really silly, but he's pretty quick about it. It's funny. She doesn't fall for it, though. Of course not. (laughs) Because she's the type of person who would flush a turtle down the food process so Vinny kills people and uh, works for the mob and you're saying she's the villain in this movie yeah well, and she's well, annoying 
No, she's not annoying. She's yes, annoying. she is. Every time I hear her voice. <laughs> Barney and Vinny fly to New York to testify in court. On the plane, Vinny begins to read one of his stolen books. But he ended up keeping it. <laughs> like, she didn't end up taking it. So he had a book. In which she he, didn't want to know how to write a book. I know, but you would think they would return it to whoever he stole it from. He ended up keeping it. Anyways, he's learning how to write his own book. Vinny begins with writing down notes in a notebook. They land in New York and Vinny's entire family is there to greet him. His mom is there crying. He begs Barney to uncuff him so he can hug his mother. They hug and then Vinny hugs everyone else. Before Barney knows it, Vinny is gone. I love that part because the mom even insults him. He's like, you're so dumb. Like She starts laughing at his face when Barney realizes that the whole plan was for Vinny to run away. I think it's weird how he's like handcuffed to Barney. He's like a witness. Can't can't let him escape. Why can't they just handcuff him together? And then he'd still run away from Barney. Yeah, but like that's not that big of a deal. It's not like he went and did something crazy. He went and bought a suit. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is he if he gets killed, then all that time they're trying to get the mob bosses over. Right? Because he, he can't testify anymore. They need to keep him alive. The next morning, Barney finds Vinny at his tailor. Vinny convinces Barney to get a new suit. That night, Vinny escapes again, but Barney finds him at a bar. Vinny tells him to lighten up and go and talk to some girls. They all dance the merengue together and have a blast. At the end of the night, some goons come to kill Vinny, but Barney shoots at them and they run away. Vinny thanks Barney and says he's in his debt forever. In court the next day, Vinny crushes his testimony. Did you like them? So the Menenga scene was funny the first time. So this part you found entertaining? Yeah, and then the rest got boring. And it's the same song, right? They play I the same song so. as they do in the show? I don't know. Yeah. No, no remember Back in Freiburg, things are going smoothly. Vinny's getting adjusted to the suburban life. Barney's lighting up and people love his new suit. Barney and Vinny come up with an idea to invite Hannah and her sons to a baseball game so Barney can woo her. Vinny meets Hannah at her house. She's hesitant to take her sons to the baseball game with Vinny. She eventually relents when the limo shows up. At the baseball game, the boys have a great time. They tell Vinny about the terrible state their local baseball field is in. Hannah and Barney click, and he asks her out to a company party, and she accepts. Things are looking up. Vinny meets Sheldine, and they get married in Reno. At the cocktail party, Barney asks Hannah, to dance. She says she doesn't know how. They dance the merengue, dancing part two, and have the time of their lives. And Kirby gets in on it with some sweet dance moves. Barney and Hannah talk all night and eventually they kiss and he goes home with her. Inappropriate! The next morning, Will comes in without knocking and Barney throws him out. Hannah is super happy. So you didn't like Kirby doing his own dance moves by himself? Mm. Like Kirby was just getting done. You know who Kirby is? Mr. Noodle's brother, Mr. Noodle. I don't remember Mr. Noodle ever. So Mr. Noodle is the clown from Elmo's World. I don't think, I think he's just from Sesame Street. Elmo is way more refined. Uh, No, he's, this is, Elmo says this is Mr. Noodle's brother, Mr. Noodle. On Sesame Street, not (laughs) on Elmo's World. Elmo's World is on Sesame Street. Elmo's World is its own thing. Elmo's World is the last five, ten minutes of Sesame Street. Yeah, and it's the best 10 minutes of Sesame Street. Anyways, he's such a good dancer because, he, I mean, those clowns are very talented, comedic, you know, like physical actors. Because, mm-hmm. you know, they went to like clown universe. He's like a Hall of Fame clown. This guy who plays uh, Kirby. Like he is. He's in like the clown Hall of Fame. The guy is like a master. He's Mr. Noodle. He's Mr. Noodle's brother, Mr. Noodle. Who's Mr. Mr. Noodle? Mr. Noodle. He's the clown with a mustache. They're both Mr. Noodle because they both have the same name because they're brothers. But he's not Mr. Noodle. He's Mr. Noodle's brother, Mr. Noodle. <laughs> you remember Mr. Noodle? He had a little mustache. Mr. Noodle. No. I do remember this thing where it was like it was like a magician thing. And then he drew a picture. And he was like, who is that? To the people. And it was just some guy with curly hair that he drew. And then everyone's like, I think that's Mr. Noodle. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, yes. But I don't actually remember Mr. Noodle. 
No memory. Does it, you whatsoever. remember? Okay, we're done talking. We're done talking. Well, I know he's from the movie. I remember his face, but I don't remember him as Mr. Noodle's brother, Mr. Noodle. Barney and Kirby are given a new undercover assignment. They are posing as fencers who are buying some goods from a criminal mob. It happens to be Vinny's crew. While Barney and Kirby are undercover, Vinny hijacks a shipment of empty five-gallon jugs. He comes with the idea to place him around town and ask people for money to fix the baseball field. They're making tons of money from this. Do you think he ever meant to make the baseball field, or do you think he was going to steal all that money? No, he was definitely going to steal all that money. Yeah, I think so, too. Hannah finds out about the fake fundraiser and arrests Vinny. He tells her that if she lets him go, he will tell her where some illegal fencers are. She agrees. The cops go and storm the fencer's hotel room. Hannah's fear is when she finds out it's Barney and Kirby. She arrests Vinny and arraigns him under his real name. So now it's real. Now he's going to get in trouble. Barney tries to talk Hannah out of it, but she's too angry. He tells Vinny that he's mad at him for messing things up with Hannah. Vinny gets an idea and makes a phone call. At court, Hannah goes to Vinny and then two goons come in and start shooting. Vinny makes his getaway with the help of Crystal. They kiss and she comes with him. So they fell in love right there. Crystal. You know, he got married with Sheldine, but she was like a no character at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Vinny drives to the baseball field, being remodeled by Vinny's crew. Hannah and Barney show up. Then the goons show up and Vinny saves the day by shooting the guns out of their hands. The goons are arrested and Hannah drops all the charges on Vinny after seeing that the fundraiser was legit. A year later, it's opening day for the baseball field. Vinny has released his book and is city council man of the year. Vinny and Crystal are together and she has a baby. And Barney and Hannah are together as well. The teens come out wearing suit jackets and Vinny's crew and family all enjoy the game. The... And kind of like a happy ending, right? Everybody's just having a good time. Yeah. So he ends up marrying, or at least he ends up staying with Crystal. And then they end up having a baby together. And Sheldine's at the game, too. So I guess she just she just forgives him and they break up or something, I guess. I don't know. All right. Could this movie still be made today? I don't know. I don't have my notes. So this is a podcast two in a row that you're ill-prepared and have no notes. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know. He just acts a little crazy. So there was probably something that he said that was a little bit strange. And also like the pure amount of women that are just like his wife throughout this movie is a little bit crazy. He does have three love interests, right? Yeah. And it's just kind of like this view of like, oh, all these women are crazy in this town. Like everyone's just psychotic. No, just the one. Well, the whole movie is about like, dang, all these women are crazy. Okay. Like what? Okay. Like think the main character. Everyone's like, we hate her. She's annoying. She's rude. She's like terrible. Everyone hates this woman. Eventually they come to love her. But at the beginning, it's just all about like, oh, she's so gross. And then the rest of the women in this movie, the first one leaves him because she can't be in the quiet or whatever. And then the other girl marries him after like, Meeting him in the grocery store because she's shallow and wants money. And then she goes into well, Las Vegas. I don't think it's about money. And all of that. And then the final lady. I don't even remember her because she was just such a short-lived character. And she was a police officer. She met, we met her in the beginning of Oh, her. yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then, like, she's also, like, this... She's supposed to be this, like, ditzy, like, comic relief character... So it's just all these women of being like, oh, they're all kind of a little bit crazy. I would say the most powerful person in the movie was a female. She's the assistant DA. All right. So, I mean, pretty good. She is very competent and good at her job. She's the only one that didn't fall for his stories and his lies. But then it's the whole point and that everyone's like, wow, she's she sure is. They do make fun of her being so common or frumpy and like the shoes, right? He may, there's a whole scene where he says, it's the shoes. Your husband left you because of your shoes or something like that. Yeah. And then she ends up getting high heels, you know, just to like fit in or to look nicer for him. Yeah, though. but they like make fun of her the whole movie as well. So I'm not saying like just she is powerful, but like 
the movie is portraying her as this like annoying person because yeah. she is powerful. Like, no sense of humor, right? They also yeah. made fun of that. They're like, you know, you don't have a sense of humor. You're not. You don't think anything's funny. So, yeah, kind of like a frumpy person. And then the cop, she's. It's cool. like if you're the only, if you're the only successful one, that means you have to give up everything else about you. Well, or maybe if you're successful, that doesn't mean that you can be sexy or funny or you have to be boring. I guess I don't know. Maybe I guess that's what they think. I don't know. I I liked her character. I thought she was. Uh, yeah, I could see where she's a little bit annoying, but at the same time, I think she was a strong character, and she didn't like change who she was for anybody. So, I mean, the fact that he's, I don't think Steve Martin. Maybe Steve Martin's Italian. I don't know. He's a little bit of a stereotype, you know, or the way he talks and he acts like a certain way. Might have been a little too over the top, but I thought that was pretty good. All right. Anything else? No, not really. Does it pass the Bechtel test? No. No? Are you sure? Not really. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and go over it all, and then we'll see if there's a moment that we can recall where it does pass. All right. The Bechtel test is the test to check for female representation in a the movie. There are three criteria. Criteria number one, are there two or more named females? Yeah. There's a main lady. Hannah. Hannah. Then there's Shaldine, the guy's original wife. Um, Linda, I think it was. And the cop lady. Crystal. Okay. And there's a, the guy's mom. Yeah. I don't know if they name her, but it's his mom. Okay. So it passes step one. Criteria number two. Do they talk to each other? One time. Or a few times. It's with Hannah and Crystal. What do they talk about? They talk about how, like, oh, he's cool. Yeah. It makes the hair on the back of my neck pop up. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So, number two passes. Criteria number three, do they talk to each other about anything other than a man? No! Yeah, I don't think so. The time they talk to each other, they talk about Vinny or they talk about Barney. But not, nothing else. Oh, there's the, his wife, too. His wife is one of the characters in the movie. Yeah, that's about it. All right, so it doesn't pass the Bechdel test. That is too bad. But it is a funny movie, and it's a four-star smash hit for Natalie. Mm. Anything else you want to talk about this wonderful movie that we watched? It was very funny. I thought it was still really funny. A lot of funny jokes, especially when he's yelling at people. I have one final thought. Please. Save the turtles. Save the turtles. That was my favorite part of the whole movie. Where he, Are we going to get another down. claim from Peter? Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, that wasn't my favorite part. Yeah, it was my favorite part of the movie. Because you could see it coming. And then I look over to you, and you're so emotional about it. I was like, my poor baby. You have a good heart, Natalie. It's a, it was a real turtle. It was a real turtle. No, no, it was a toy. They're not gonna kill a real turtle. In I a think movie. they killed a real turtle. You think that they killed a real turtle? To you make saw this movie? it crawl in. Yeah. It went, but... rrr, 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 rrr. No, it was special effects. It was a. Fake they don't movie. have special effects. It was real. It's real. Okay. Well, I'm sorry about the the saddest part of the movie. You're like, what was the saddest movie you ever saw? My Blue Heaven. Oh, really? Why, why is that? They killed the turtle. They killed the turtle. I couldn't take it anymore. I got so sad. You're like, I'm watching Titanic. You're like, whatever. You watch this movie, you're like, no. I laughed during the Titanic. <laughs> I just watched a movie with uh, with Sophie, and the guy's like, I haven't cried this much since Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? No. Thank you for tuning in to Poppy Approved Movies. If you like this episode, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcast app or like our podcast on YouTube. We put out an episode every Monday. If you want to watch more podcast content, follow our TikTok at Poppy Approved Movies. If you want to suggest a movie for us to watch and critique, email us at poppyapprovedmovies at gmail.com. That's poppyapprovedmovies at gmail.com. No spaces, no caps. We'll try our best to get to your suggestion. Next week, Sophia will be back and we'll be watching Little Miss Sunshine. And I'll be back in two weeks to watch About a Boy. I'm Poppy. And I'm Natalie. See you next time. Bye.